Hey everyone, it's low carb and keto nutrition specialist Amy Berger bringing you, as always, keto without the crazy. One quick announcement before I get to today's topic, and that is just a reminder that my dear friend Casey Durango and I will be hosting another one of our virtual keto support group meetings on Tuesday, August 13th at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. Tuesday, August 13th, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. I will put a link in the notes below. So if you are looking for a safe, non-judgmental, supportive, and fun, down-to-earth, non-crazy place to share your wins with keto, celebrate your successes, get help troubleshooting if you need help, get that little gentle virtual kick in the rear if you need one of those to get back on track. We are there for all of it. Whether you've been doing keto forever, whether you're brand new, whatever your level of experience or success or lack thereof, the more the merrier you are welcome to join us. Link in the notes. Okay, I did a video recently about maintenance on keto and it seemed to be a big hit which is nice because i think we don't really talk enough about maintenance in the keto world right we're always so concerned about losing the weight well what about the people who've already lost it and they they don't want to regain it and have to lose it again so i'm glad that the maintenance topic resonated today let's talk about if you're not maintaining let's say that you lost a bunch of weight sometime in the past and now some or all of it has come back or maybe it brought friends and all of it came back plus interest so if you're dealing with a weight regain this is for you the first thing you need to know is if you have regained weight on a keto or low carb diet, whatever flavor of low, low carb variety you do, do you know what it makes you? Do you know what regaining weight makes you? A perfectly normal human being. <laughs> this is so common and there is absolutely nothing wrong with you. You're not broken. You're not a failure. In fact, the norm a lot of the time is to regain weight you know not just in keto but with a, a lot of other ways of losing weight especially things like bariatric surgery or you know some of the people now that are starting to come off these new weight loss medications the glp1 receptor agonist drugs a lot of those people are starting to get that rebound weight gain so you know if if you have regained weight Welcome to the human race. <laughs> you are totally 100% normal. And so what are we gonna do about it? That's really the question. Now, ah, I have some notes and you know it's serious when Amy brought the notes. So let me just consult here. Okay, couple of things that we need to do before we address what to do with their weight regain in terms of how do we start getting the weight back off again there's a lot of psychological groundwork that has to be laid i think before we want to jump into the actions of how do i get the weight off again i think one of the first things that is really important to do is to forgive yourself immediately right now however much you've regained however long it's been that you've been gaining back Forgive yourself right now. I did a video not long ago called Forgive Your Way to Fat Loss. I'll put a link in the notes. Um, that that self-forgiveness is critically important because in my experience, very few people ever take positive action or make long-lasting habit change from a place of shame and from a place of self-loathing and regret and that mental beatdown. Now, if you do respond to that kind of stuff, great. You beat yourself up all you want. You talk down to yourself all you want. I just don't typically see that being helpful for most people. So you just have to say, I forgive myself. I have a clean slate. Whatever I ate or did not eat or whatever I did or did not do in the past that has led me to this place of weight regain I get a fresh start right now. The slate is wiped clean. How am I gonna go forward from here? 
So you're forgiving yourself. Something else that you have to do, which kind of goes hand in hand with that, is accept that you are here right now. You have to accept that this is where you are starting from at this moment in time. There's a Byron Katie quote. I haven't actually read a lot of her work, but I've heard about her work on a lot of podcasts I listen to. Byron Katie, B-Y-R-O-N-K-A-T-I-E, I think. She said something like, when you argue with reality, you only lose 100% of the time. So you can wish all you want that you hadn't regained the weight. You can fantasize, woulda, coulda, shoulda. I should have done X. I wish, I wish this hadn't happened. I wish I wasn't here. But you are. And fighting it mentally and emotionally doesn't solve the problem. Fighting it, refusing to accept it, you know, being putting a wall up to the reality doesn't change the reality. So this is where I'm at for whatever reasons. Here's where I'm starting from. And coming, coming out of that line of thinking, I think it's very important to tell yourself, and this is easier said than done, I know, you have to tell yourself that this is not a catastrophe. This isn't the end of the world. You didn't murder somebody's child. All that's happened is you've put some weight back on. Maybe you've put a lot of weight back on. Even if, even if some health issues have come back along with that weight, even if let's say you had gotten off all of your medicine for type two diabetes and now you had to go back on some medicine or same for blood pressure, or maybe now you had really bad adult acne or rosacea or something and that was gone and now it's back. Your heartburn is back, the joint pain is back, all the things, right, all the stuff. So what? The good thing is, you know, or I hope you know, I hope you experienced it the first time around, that keto can help get rid of all that. Keto can help reverse all that, put it into remission, whatever phrase you want to use. You just have to get back to doing it, right? You don't have to worry that it's not going to work or, you know, I wonder if keto will fix my ex problem. Well, yeah, it probably fixed it six months ago or two years ago. So, even if, even if some health issues have come back, it's still not a catastrophe because you know what to do about it. And there is something you can do about it. It's not like you have something that is untreatable, intractable, or that is unfixable. Now you might, you might have something that fits that category. We're not talking about that. I did a video recently on how keto doesn't fix everything. Um, so you might have some issues that keto doesn't fix, but if that's the case, then keto wouldn't have fixed them the first time around. So you're not expecting that to go away right now anyway. So when I say, you know, it's not the end of the world, putting on weight is not a tragedy. And I know for some of us, especially us ladies, it can feel like it is, you know, especially if your self-esteem and your self-worth is intimately tied to your weight or to the size or shape of your body, then it can feel like a disaster. It can feel like a tragedy. It can feel like a catastrophe if you have put weight back on. But I can tell you something. Nobody in your life, if, if they knew you when you were slimmer, and they see you now and you're heavier again. Nobody is judging you as harshly as you are judging yourself. And I think the reason that we feel a lot of shame and fear and, you know, sorrow almost over like, like, I don't want to go to this party. I don't want to go to this event. I don't want to go to that social outing because I'm so ashamed of how I look. And like, what will they think? What will they say? probably not much. We have so much of our own self image wrapped up in our bodies, way more than anyone else has wrapped up in our bodies. You know why? They are way too concerned about their own stuff. So 
nobody nobody thinks about us as much as we as we think they do and that's either a little bit insulting like huh shouldn't shouldn't they be looking at me shouldn't they be interested in me or it's very freeing and liberating oh, thank goodness nobody cares about me anyway so who cares what i look like who cares how much weight i've gained or lost nobody cares whoo what a relief <laughs> so it could go either way right friends um let's see i am consulting the notes here Okay, let's let's move on. That's that's the mindset work I think that has to be done. That groundwork that has to be laid before you can make a dent in this and actually start, you know, getting back to where you were. So, if if you've regained, don't make it more complicated than it is. When did you start regaining and why? Did you just simply stop eating keto or low carb or carnivore or whatever? then start doing it again, right? It doesn't need to be more complicated than that. There doesn't need to be some deep like trauma thing that, that needs to be healed first. Um, I, I've had the privilege of actually observing my friend, Dr. Eric Westman at his clinic at Duke University. And this was a few years ago, but um, I, was, I was in the room and he had a, a patient visit and he, this person was doing really well. They were like losing weight, losing weight for a while, doing well. And then it kind of stopped and it started like going back up again. And you know, Dr. Westman is like one of the nicest, most friendly, least judgmental people in the world. So the patient comes in, they've regained weight and he pulls out the chart and he's got his pencil and he's pointing to the inflection point of when the weight loss stopped and the gain started. And he said, what happened here? What was, what happened? Turns out, I think the, per like the person's father died or something. You know, or, you know, for you, maybe, maybe it was something like that, death of a loved one. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe you got into a car accident or something tragic happened to someone you love. So, or, or maybe, maybe no big reason. You just stopped. You just got tired or bored, you know? So get, get right back on plan. Stop looking for some magical thing, some magical hack, some magical trick that's just going to put all the pieces into place whatever was working before just do that again i can't tell you how many clients have come to me and said you know i did atkins 30 years ago and i did really great but my doctor told me to stop or yeah i did atkins right back in the 70s i was one of dr atkins patients and my cardiologist got worried and so sometimes you know i'll say to these people like I'm happy to have a consultation with you. We can work together, but Atkins worked well for you. What, just go back to the Atkins diet. You know, why, why are we trying to reinvent the wheel? Why are we trying to find a whole bunch of other things that, that might work when we already know what works? We just need to do it again. You might, you might even be, th or, or actually, let me go back to the, like, what changed? If, if you have experienced a regain, Maybe there was some type of tragic life circumstance or not even tragic, just a, a big change. Maybe you moved to a new city, got a new, a new job, something, some, some big change that just, ah, there was a big shift and you just stopped following your keto plan. But what if it was something else? What if um, you had a change in medication? Um, there are a lot of medications that cause you to gain weight or make it much, much harder to lose, even when you're still doing exactly what you were doing. Any of you that have taken steroid drugs like prednisone or something, you can balloon up and it's from the prednisone. Even if you, you know, if you, you haven't changed what you eat or what you're doing, something about the way that drug, you know, changes your hormones and physiology while you take it. Yeah. So, you know, maybe you had a change in medication. Maybe for some reason, your sleep pattern is really different. Are you sleeping as much or as well as you were when you were losing weight? How's your stress? I personally have only recently come to understand how much stress has been impacting me physically, mentally, and emotionally. And you would think doing what I do, that should not have been a surprise to me. And yet, I mean, one day I had a darn near like, virtual slap upside the face epiphany 
as to how much it's been affecting me. So maybe you're in that position. Maybe, you know, you were doing really well with keto, the weight's coming off really well and something happened, what good, bad, indifferent, and your, your nervous system is just on high alert all the time. And, you know, good luck losing weight when, when your nervous system is, is completely redlined all the time. Um, what else is here? Let's, I mean, let's talk about the obvious thing. When, when I write things out of order, then I say them out of order. Let's talk about the food. You know, may, maybe you just got complacent. Maybe you're actually still doing keto or what you think is keto, but maybe at the beginning or a while back when the weight was coming off steadily, you were ultra, ultra strict, you know, just, just animal proteins and, and non-starchy vegetables, maybe small amounts of nuts, some dairy, like just, just, I mean, this term is a loaded term, but like real food, real whole food. And maybe the last few months or however long you've been experimenting with the keto baked goods, the keto brownies, the keto cookies, whether you are buying them at the store or you're making them yourself, maybe you've been going a little crazy on the nut flour, baked goods and desserts, all that almond flour, coconut flour, coconut cream, coconut butter, um, the, the keto cereal, keto ice cream. So you might be consuming a lot of things that you think are low carb or suitable for keto and maybe they are for some people, but you need to be much, much stricter in order to have weight keep coming off or in order to re get weight off. You know, that's, um, sometimes that's all it takes. Like I said, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Sometimes we just need to kind of get back to center, so to speak, if you've been like a little bit on the fringes. <laughs> so again, just, I think, I hope that's helpful to hear. I really think some people just need to be reminded that it doesn't have to be complicated. You don't have to go searching for, for some new strategy, some brand new thing. Like you might be wondering, maybe I need to exercise more. Maybe I should do a, you know, one of those intense boot camps at 5 a.m. seven days a week, or maybe I should start doing extended fasting. Well, is, did you do that when the weight came off the first time? If it worked without that the first time, then start there. Just do, do whatever you were doing, right? Now, in one of my recent videos, I said, what works for you at one point might not be what you need now. So just because you didn't need certain little tweaks and changes a while back when you were losing steadily, you might need them now, but let's not start there. Let's not assume that what worked really well six months ago, two, three years ago, won't work again. Start there, start with the sort of lowest level, easiest, simplest intervention. You know, why try to pull 97 levers when maybe you could pull two levers and get the same good result? So, you know, if you want to hack and look for new tricks and spend lots of money buying lotions and potions and gadgets, that is totally fine. You can do that to your heart's content. But again, you know, if, 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 if you regained a lot of weight, chances are you've been off plan for a while. And if it's hard enough to just be on plan, why make it harder for yourself? Do you know what I mean? If, 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 <laughs> why can't I speak right now? Um, don't, why make it harder for yourself? If, if it was easy for you to get back on plan, you'd already be back on plan and you, A, wouldn't have regained weight in the first place, or you'd already be in the process of starting to lose the regain or like reverse the regain. So if that's not the case, if you're still stuck in it, then we don't want to make it even harder than it already might seem for you. But again, I'm trying to emphasize that you might be thinking it's harder than it is. Just, just get back to the basics. I have, I have another video called like something on back to basics. I'll, if I remember, I'll put a link to the notes. I know I often say, oh, I'll put a link and then there's no link. Um, it's just sometimes I forget. 
I don't have an assistant. It's just me. I'm a one woman show for now anyway. So, um, yeah, don't, don't psych yourself out. Don't psych yourself out. It's going to be so hard. I can't, I can't believe I regained so much. I'm back to square one. I'm starting over again. No, you're not. The beautiful thing about having been successful at one time in the past is that you have proof that you can do it. So you don't have to doubt. You don't have to be uncertain. You know you can succeed because you already did it once before. And you are starting now from a place of being more knowledgeable about what works for you and what doesn't. If you have been indulging a little too often in those keto cereals and the keto ice creams and the keto breads, and that's not working so well for you, that's great. That's empowering. Wow, I know so much more now about what the best way is for me and what I kind of need to stay away from if I really want this to work again. So... Okay, 21 minutes, let's close out there. But to anyone who is still watching, because I know some people don't make it this far in the videos, I purposely left this little commentary to the end because every now and then when I have a lot of preamble in a video, I get a couple of, you know, snarky comments about like, oh, three, three minutes in and you're not even saying anything or blah, blah, blah. You know what? My videos are free. Like, whatever. So anyway, to those of you who are still watching, I will assume that you are hardcore, diehard, keto without the crazy fans. And I appreciate you so much. Um, but because you are diehard, hardcore, keto without the crazy fans, then you might know that in one of my recent videos, I was wearing a pink blouse with a little like keyhole thing and it had a ribbon and it was pink and white and red stripes. I had so many positive messages about that shirt. I think I got more positive feedback for that shirt than I got for the content of the video, which is fine. I don't care, but like, how interesting, right? So I was like, oh, I'll wear this. Is, this is a new shirt too. It's like, I don't know. You, you can't appreciate the whole thing because I'm sitting down, but you know, it's kind of funky colored. And um, I, you know, maybe I should start a fashion channel if I get more attention and more people commenting on what I wear than what I'm actually saying. But here's the funny part. And I'll tell you this because you are fans. <laughs> this is not how I look normally throughout the day. I spend most of my work day, by, I live alone like by myself in front of my computer in the, this is my home office in here. And I am not wearing makeup. Usually I am usually wearing a big, and I mean big, baggy t-shirt, probably stained, probably bacon grease, you know, hello, but like, <laughs> probably stained in some way, and big, big baggy pants that I don't wear out of the house. They're just comfy, and yeah. So I, I guess I'm saying that because, believe me, nobody wants fashion advice from me. But, you know, I try to glam up a little bit for my videos, so... Whether you comment on the content of my video or my outfits, my fashion, I appreciate you being here. Thank you for watching. And if you have made it this far, please subscribe if you're not already. And let's get some more viewers in here. So if you are on social media, if you have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, whatever, please feel free to share my videos far and wide. You know, post them, post links. And... One more order of business. I'm going to be out of the country from, what about July 30th until August 11th or so. So if you leave a comment on, uh, I think this video is gonna be posted while I'm gone. I'm recording some videos to post for you while I'm away. I'll post them, you know, schedule them ahead of time. Um, so that way you don't have to go weeks without my, I won't say wisdom, my running my mouth about keto. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to leave you all hanging like for a couple of weeks with nothing. So, um, I do think this is going to be published while I'm away, but so if you leave a comment and you don't hear from me, that's why I'm not ignoring you. I'm just out of the country. And I, I expect to have some, you know, internet access and cell service where I'm going, but I do not plan to use it very much. I am looking very forward to being away for the first time in a very long time where I am not planning to keep up with work while I'm gone. So 
in the meantime, thank you for watching. As always, I will see you next time. And again, I'm just going to be away for a little bit. So love to you in the meantime. And I look forward to catching up on comments when I get back. See you next time.